Hello and welcome to another video. I am the Starman. Now, I've been really quiet over the last, how long has it been? Six weeks, maybe six weeks. Uh, I'm not really sure, but oh, the weather's been absolutely horrendous. I've, I've um, not been able to do hardly anything since my last uh, video. The last video I did was a follow up to, uh, to my um, Moonrise video. I think that was back in, back in August. Uh, anyway, before I do anything else, I just want to welcome any new subscribers to my channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, what I do is I, I go around, I go to all these places, dark places, not always dark places, but I, I take pictures of the Milky Way, stars, epic moonrises. If you look at my last video or the one before that, you'll see what I mean about the moonrises. So I really appreciate any new subscribers. If you know anybody else who's into this sort of thing, who wants to get into night photography, astro photography, learn about the sky, the night sky, how to capture a moonrise, uh, how to set up your camera for lower light, um, capturing faint things like the Milky Way, uh, put them on to me because I need the subscribers. You know, I'm not this, you know, I don't have thousands and thousands of, I'd like to get to a thousand actually, but we'll, we'll see anyway. But anyway, I'm actually working to a script because I've wrote a few things down here because it's been a while. So just to remind me of what I need to say. So yes, welcome to new subscribers. Thanks for subscribing. I'm sure that you're going to like what I'm going to be doing over the next uh, few months into winter because there's loads to do in the winter. So yeah, um, it's, it's been the weather. I mean, the weather's been absolutely horrendous. Um, but I have been doing stuff. I've been doing, I've actually ran a couple of very successful astro workshops. And they were both down in um, in Wales on Anglesey, uh, in Lan on Landwin Island in particular. Um, I did a video of that last year. If you look back through my videos, you'll t you'll see a video I did last year. Now I couldn't do any vlogs on this on these workshops because I had people to look after, and it wouldn't have been any good for me to be doing my own vi little video. With I had a group of people to look after. So, but anyway, both workshops went really well. The weather was clear, super clear. We saw amazing Milky Way, really amazing Milky Way. I'm just showing you some pictures now from the trip. I mean, it, it was just incredible. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, um, you could actually see the twilight sky change. You know, when you get that blue sky and it changes into tonight and then you start to see what look a bit like clouds and actually the, it's the Milky Way star clouds that's coming out. And we saw that. That's what I really like doing. And anyway, if you're into that sort of thing, if you'd like to come on a workshop with us, uh, just leave a comment or contact me on Twitter or, or whatever, and uh, I'll certainly be trying to do some more through the winter. So yeah, um, as you can see, uh, the, the pictures from the workshop in Landwin Island, uh, the conditions were absolutely amazing. It, it was really, really good. Uh, it couldn't have gone better, and all the people that came with me were really, really happy. Now, I've also been doing stuff closer to home. I've been doing quite a lot of illuminations photography because I live in Blackpool and uh, we have the illuminations on this time of year and we've got trams, illuminated trams running up and down the track. So uh, I'm just showing you a couple of those pictures now of the illuminated trams I've been doing. Also. I've been doing all sorts of stuff, but it's not really the sort of stuff I could really add to this channel. Um, I'd like to sort of maybe add something like later on, but at the moment I'm just keeping it all towards uh, the stars, the moon, night sky, that sort of thing. Yeah. So we're now heading into, um, we're into autumn now, and we're heading towards winter, where at this time of the year it's not too late to photograph the Milky Way, and I will be going out, as soon as I get another clear night, I'll be going out to photograph it again. Uh, the only thing is, is that Sagittarius region, the bright, the brightest part of the Milky Way has now sort of gone for us now. It's set now. Um, as soon as it gets dark, that part of the sky is already gone. So we've lost that part of the sky, but it doesn't matter too much because we've still got the summer triangle, which if you look up on a clear night, um, about an hour after sunset, you'll see the three stars of the summer triangle. Um, here's a picture of it now, uh, just to give you an idea. That's still overhead and it will be overhead for the next uh, month or so. And as long as that is prominent in the sky, there's a very good chance to capture the Milky Way. As long as you're sort of pointing towards the triangle and, and towards the southwestern horizon, because that's where all the, the interesting part of the Milky Way is at this time of the year. So the Milky Way is flipping between the summer 
and the winter part. So in the summer we get to see towards the inside of the, the galaxy, the, 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 the bulge as it were, the bulge of the galaxy, you're looking into the galaxy in the summer. And then in the winter, um, we're, we're, we're looking more towards the outside. So we still get the Milky Way, but it's a much more subtle kind of glow. And then ob obviously we also get uh, the pretty amazing constellation of Orion as well, which is very dominant in the winter. And that's a great constellation to photograph as well. It's a really, really nice constellation. So it doesn't really matter what time of the year you want to shoot, it's just different, it changes all the time. So I'll be looking forward to shooting Orion this winter and um, hopefully catch that glow of the, the subtle glow of the Milky Way uh, just above Orion as well. Now, here's something that I'm going to be doing over the next, uh, maybe the next video or the next video after that. I'm gonna be having a play with this thing. This is my tracking mount. It's a Fornax 10 um, Light Track 2 tracking mount. And this is a portable tracking mount that you can take around, set up on your tripod with a few other little bits, put your camera on top, and you can track the stars using this. So what I'm gonna do is, I've already done some videos with setting this up and I've, I've pitted it against another tracker as well. You can actually buy these fairly cheap. This is quite a substantial one, it's quite big and it's got all these options on it. It's very, quite heavy as well, this. Um, you can actually buy a lot cheaper ones. This is about 500 pound. You can buy them, Probably from about maybe 150, 200. Uh, you can, there's some Chinese ones just coming onto the market now. Um, most popular one is probably the Star Adventurer. Uh, you can get two versions of that. You can get that and the mini one. Uh, this particular one is really built for a heavy duty camera and a telephoto lens or even a telescope. This can take a telescope. So it's really built for that sort of thing. But it's a very, very good tracker and I will be showing in the next video or two how I actually go about setting something like this up from the ground up. I'll probably do that during the day and I've actually been having a practice with this in the last couple of weeks because I've been so, I haven't used it for so long, I thought I'd better have a play with it and see if I can actually still work the thing. So I'm just going to put a couple of pictures up now that I took using my uh, telephoto lens. I was taking a picture of the, the, the Ring Nebula which is a planetary nebula, like a, it's a the after glow of a supernova and that's in the constellation of Lyra uh, with Vega, near Vega, one of the brightest stars in the whole sky and one of the stars of the summer triangle. Now it's a very very small target, it looks a bit like a smoke ring. Now I was able to capture that using I think it was 30 seconds exposure and a 300 millimeter lens so it's very, very small for the type of lens. It really needs a big telescope, but it's still a very impressive. And I also captured the Andromeda galaxy as well. This is a single shot of the Andromeda galaxy, just a pot shot really. Again, using this mount, I think it was um, maybe a one minute exposure or a two minute, I can't think now. Um, just a single shot from the garden in the light pollution in Blackpool with floodlights all over the place lighting the sky up and I think it's pretty impressive really so I need to be doing a bit more of that a bit more of the deep deep sky stuff because that's what that is it's very different to the landscape it's a very different type of it is more like proper astrophotography I'd say anyway so yeah so look out for the next couple of videos when hopefully I will be having a little play with this uh, and that's it really I think just one one last thing I've got this new setup here I've got I collect these cameras, I've just got to show you, this is, this is just a bit of fun, this bit off topic, but here we go. Did you ever see these cameras? This is um, a really, really cheap and nasty horror. I mean, oh, it's just, it's just horrible. I mean, oh, oh, I've broken it, oh no, I've broken it already, the, the lens has come off. What was it? Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a 50mm f6.3 optical lens focus free. That's just a piece of crap. But, I mean, look at it. Did you ever see these? I mean, I live in Blackpool and we have all these markets and the markets were rife with these things. They were meant to look like, um, like a really professional camera. And they are. They're not even worth the plastic that they're made out of. If I melted down all this plastic, it'd be worth more than the camera. I'm telling you, it's, it's horrible. Uh, it's got a 50 millimeter fixed focus. It's a bit like a pinhole camera, really. It's got a, a viewfinder here, 
which you look through there. It's even got a top-down viewfinder as well. I can't believe it. And it's got this flash as well, which is sort of wired to here, which doesn't need to be. Um, it does actually work, funny enough. It does actually work. It did do one day. Uh, if I put a battery in it, it might work. 35mm film, yep. Not a digital. It's just... I got it off, so I said I've got to have that off you. Yeah, I think I gave him five pounds for it. <laughs> so I was, I, it's really bad, but I just had to have it because it's just one of those things that they used to sell. Um, it's just really funny. Uh, quite interesting to see how that does on the Milky Way, don't you think? Anyway, I'll just put that back over there. So there you go. So anyway. Like I say, the next video, look out for it. I'll be doing something very soon. I was supposed to be doing the, the moonrise tonight, but the weather's been absolutely terrible. It let, it just chucked it down just before before uh, sunset as well tonight. It absolutely chucked it down. And uh, I was hoping to get the moonrise because we're approaching the full moon at the moment. So there's another chance tomorrow. So maybe tomorrow I might have a little go at the moonrise. And if there is a chance of getting it, I'll film it. But in the meantime, uh, you can follow me on Twitter um, and, uh, and I'll see you next time.